Welcome back to Final Fantasy IX. So like what's happened with a couple of previous streams, I did some off-stream recording. A lot more than I'd originally intended. So th this is probably going to be the majority of the stream. It's like an hour and a half long recording. Squashing down, I don't know how many hours I recorded of the game. Let's just jump into it. Uh, it's not all grinding, but it is a lot of treasure hunting, things with Choco, stuff like that. So first thing was something that happened when I went back to Aiko's home. Lonnie's here. I was a little confused and I looked it up. This isn't anything we can do. Like, this is something we can't really do anything with until disc four, actually. So it's interesting that she shows up here back in disc three. And also, I was curious about that chest in the back. We can't open it. There's a phoenix down in there. All right, from this point, it's a lot of stuff with Chocobo. This first thing, it's actually... This, this is probably something that's easier to get to once we could find uh, an additional upgrade for Choco. But we might actually need to come here before we can get there anyway. Uh, this is another Chocobo hot and cold location. There's a really long path to get to it first, though. I can never remember which is the Forgotten Continent and which is the Lost Continent. Are we on the Forgotten Continent right now? By the way, we found the Chocobo Lagoon. Apparently, this is the best place to play Chocobo Hot and Cold, just because the location is so small compared to the other two. Yeah, all the items are, like, down in level 60. But as, an, but as a result, we get more points every time we get them. I got a little confused. I don't know why I couldn't get off Choco. This is just one of the places where you have to be on him. I'm gonna could more than quadruple those points by the end of this recording. Now we do need the ability to go into deep water before we can cover the entire location here. So right now we're limited to just this small part, and as a result, the game itself, like the Chocobo Hot and Cold game is half the price, but also half the time. So you're not gonna get a lot done here. You'd think it would make it easier. But one thing that kind of throws me off is you can go all the way into the entrance. You don't exit if you go all the way down here. So be sure to check there. There's often items there. The beak strength is half effective at this point. Well, that's irritating. It doesn't help that the item locations are still really finicky. They're very precise for something that isn't precise, like Choco's movement.
And after a point, I had found all the chocographs that I could. So some of the chocographs will, I guess they'll only turn up in one of the locations. Which probably makes sense. Also, fun fact, if you remember in the first time I was recording stuff off stream, there were some audio issues. Well, that also happened here, but in this case, I was listening to a podcast and I had the game muted. But by, by this point, I had the audio back. At this point, a lot of the chocographs are going to be in water. Also, probably after this one, if not like within the next couple chocographs, I'm going to be liberally using the speed up. That's the wrong chocograph for this place. That's the right one. That's a weapon for Amarant. We call him Garnet, and that's really confusing, but I'm, I'm trying to remember his actual name. Also, while exploring, I found this, I think, optional location. At least it's optional for now. This place is kind of cool. Daguerro. Daguerrio. I only look around this place a little bit here. I'm sure we'll come back to it at some point later. Maybe during stream, maybe off stream. But uh, from what I read, I think this is more for like disc four. But hey, we found one of the people who escaped from Clara. There's more of the goat guys. If you mean Bahamut, I... I hate to tell you. So at that point, I decide we'll come back later. And now a lot of speed up. Because a lot of the Chocograph treasure chest locations are really out of the way. But also it helps to have, a, have an idea of the path you need to take. so many potions and I'm already at 99. It'd be a waste if they weren't cheap. <laughs> Alright, so this chocograph says it basically refers to Traino, but it's on the it's behind Traino, on the other side of the mountain. It's so loud in the water. Oh, we've got another upgrade. This is not the deep water upgrade, but it's almost as good. If it, it might be even be a little bit better, although the deep water upgrade allows us to 
walk across to the entire other continent if we wanted. Bird in space! Why are they all just partying on one leg? And now we can just run up mountains. That means we've got two more upgrades left for Choco. Now just now just to find a damn beach. And up we go. So there's Traino. So look at that. So as long as you can drag Choco somewhere. You can go pretty much anywhere now. Anywhere on the same continent, at least. This is up north. Uh, I guess we're calling it the Lost Continent. Rather, we're assuming this is the Lost Continent. I think I'm specifically going for the one that I tried to get to last stream, but I couldn't. Yeah, here we go. So an easier way to get here, once you've got Mountain Chocobo, go to that, I think, Fossil Rue. The exit that leads out from Fossil Rue and then walk over the mountains. This is the place. We couldn't land here on the airship because there's no patch of grass. I think you're either assumed to come here after Mountain Chocobo or before you've got the airship when you're still on the boat, the Blue Narcissus. I'm finding a lot of the Chocograph treasures, if they're not upgrades, they either tend to be really, really special armor or duplicates of semi-rare armor, like the Enkai armlet. Alright, so this is the Forgotten Continent. One of the easier patches... Oh, damn it. One of the easier Choco, uh, Chocobo tracks to get to is all the way across from grass. So sometimes you run into enemies, but at least, at least Quinoa can eat a house. And that's not the most absurd thing that they're gonna eat in, this, in these recordings. Because at the end of this chunk that I pre-recorded, we're gonna be getting as many of the blue magic spells as I could. There's a couple that we can't get to yet because they're more endgame. I believe the treasure is right down in that little pocket. So correct me if I'm wrong, there's a summon here who I think I get the item for later in this part. Oh, this is also something that happens when you got Mount Chocobo. Now items will show up on these upper parts and getting up there is so awkward and silly looking. <laughs> Same on the other side. It looks so goofy. And there's still some chocographs that I need to find here.
And I find a new item, a dead pepper. Anyway, I was uh, referring to ores. There's a summon that I get the item for later in this. Who, if I, if I read correctly, having ores reduces their damage. I could have read that wrong. I think there's also another summon whose damage increases when you have ore. And I think that was the last chocograph that I could find in the forest. Yep. So after this batch of treasure hunting, we'll have another upgrade for Choco. Possibly even two. Because you need the final upgrade to find the last hot and cold location. Oh, we're on, that was Outer Continent. Okay. So Forgotten and Lost are both in the west. The Lost Continent is the frozen one. Got it. Pretty easy to find this forest it's referring to. I remember finding this forest just on my own. I Mage Staff is a really good weapon for GG. Let's try out the Dead Pepper, too. <laughs> Nothing there, but it's funny seeing what happens. But that forest, it doesn't have any special enemies there. They're pretty low level. There is an area around here above Gizamaluk's Grotto with dragons, though. And I'll be showing that off later in this. Right around here. The crunch combined with him making a noise, it make it really sounds like you're injuring his beak. Wanderer, my arm's fallen asleep. All right. Now we can go almost anywhere. There's still one more upgrade that will allow us to go pretty much literally everywhere. But now we can just run across oceans whenever we want. So let's try that out. It's pretty cool. It takes a while to get anywhere because Choco's not that fast in the long run. But it's some fun freedom of movement. And if you have the patience, you can cover a lot of space. Same deal. <laughs> Yeah, that's irritating. You'd think with the mountain ability, you could go from the ocean to up the cliffs from against the water. But no, there still has to be a beach there. There's Ibsen's castle. Third level there, I think. Oh, right there. find a lot of stuff for Steiner. I also did some frog catching. By the end of the off-stream off stuff, I think I had like 29, maybe 30. 
So I'm not super far in the frog catching. You gotta wait a while for the frog population to recover. Quite a few of these are on the opposite side of a continent from the beach. So you gotta walk pretty far. Jeez, that, that was a proper treasure chest. There's some choco tracks. So right nearby Ibsen's castle is another place. This is probably an easier, quicker place in the, the Forgotten Continent to get to Choco. Easier than the one that I was using this whole time. Still got to twitch along if you don't want to run into another house. At this point, I'm not looking for Chocographs, I'm looking for another friendly monster. I think I was looking for this in the last stream, but we couldn't get here because I needed Mountain Choco. Forget what this guy's name is. Jabberwock. I realized while I was recording these that the friendly versions of the enemies are recolored from the main enemies. Because the angry Jabberwocks, I think, are, are blue, but he's purple. And also, he doesn't thank you or anything. Auto haste is really nice to equip to anyone. We might have found the, moon, the Moonstone guy in the last stream anyway. And now with Deepwater Choco, we can explore this entire area. It's still smaller than Choco Forest, though. Or Chocobo Forest. <laughs> it's a tan. Right nearby one. Pretty nice. The sad thing is, if you want to get the really high end rewards from this, like the Lord's Robe, whatever it is, the thing that costs 18,000 points, you're probably not. Like, uh, once you've got all the choker rafts, there's not a lot that's going to give you that many points. So it's a really long process. I think after all of this recording, I do pretty much everything with the Chocobo Hot and Cold that I can in these recordings. I think that's gonna be it. I don't think I'm gonna do any more of that. It took me a long time to do it. For most of these, the most that I could get was seven items. And I kept wondering what would happen if I got to 8, because at 4 you get bonus time and bonus points. So what comes next? I always gotta remember that entrance. Oh, almost. Ah, not quite. Still a lot of points, though. All right, this was many attempts later, but I finally managed to get to eight points. And the reward... Uh, well, let's see if it's worth it. 
Basically, Manny says, you need to stop, and he ends it. So at, at, when you found eight items, that's it, you're done, but you get 40 bonus points. Lord of Robes, thank you. Yeah, that's, that's like an end game item, so if you can grind for that, that's probably pretty awesome. There's another way to get the Lord of Robes. I think it's from a boss fight, though. And that was the last Chocograph piece. There's only one collection of Chocograph pieces. I think the pieces specifically allow you to get to Chocobo's Paradise. And we're done here anyway. I don't think it's the Outer Island 2 one. Or it might be. Maybe one of the other Chocobo or Chocographs is for the last upgrade. Yeah, that's bullshit. There is no small reef there. This one's harder to find than you would think. This is on the east end of the Forgotten Continent, but it's a little further out from that little peninsula. Phoenix must be powerful now. Found an extra diamond. We need that for the final friendly monster, which we will also be seeing. See, look at this. There's no small reef there. If you're referring to the beach, that's not the same thing. I forget what the whale whisker is. That might be a weapon? I'm not sure. There's a few overpowered weapons that we get from Chocographs. The two I know for sure are for Steiner and, uh... We call her Puberina. I forget what her actual name is. Oh, it's for Garnet, okay. The actual Garnet or Amaranth? And there's the final upgrade. We're gone, okay. I must have given it to her then, and immediately forgotten. Well then, what's left? We can climb up mountains. We can run across water. I see, so... So yeah, the summon I was referring to is Odin, and we get the item for that later. So with more ore, better chance of ends to kill. Less damage, uh... Less damage from cleanup spear. Okay, I'll, I'll have to work that around in my brain. But for now, Chocobo... or Choco can fly. He can't just fly anywhere immediately. Like, he can fly anywhere, but he can only take off and land in forests. So I need to find another damn beach. That's not as fast as the Hildegard. But you can cover a lot of ground. And there are and as long as there's a forest, you can land where uh, the Hildegard can't. Also, there's this area that's just in a constant earthquake. 
I'm sure we'll be coming there later in the story. Anyway, now we need we need the flight to find the last of the chocograph treasures. A few of them are on this on these islands that can only be accessed through the forest. <laughs> That's a good haul. At this point, we don't actually need the treasures themselves. It's good to have, but now that we can fly, we can find Chocobo's Paradise, because the location doesn't have to do with treasures. You remember in a previous stream, might have been the very last one, we found that mysterious shadow just floating around in one area. That's it. And we need the dead prepper to fly up to the paradise. The paradise is actually up in the sky. Now, I remember this weird little item, item island nearby the Aoife tree. You can only get here through Choco. And this is a place with the last friendly monster. It's dicey, though, because it's a friendly version of probably one of the strongest monsters in the game. The strongest, despite being kind of the cutest. This little guy, the Yawn. I'm showing a battle. I'm showing the battle with this guy so that you all who don't know can see. These dudes will fuck you up. They're really fast and they do a lot of damage. And I can just blow my my people away, so there goes Quinoa. Quinoa's not dead, they're just out of the battle. Oh god, and then no comet. Luckily that one missed. Yeah, this is insane. And reminder, this is the same place where the friendly enemy is. So you have a chance to find either of them. I mostly found them the, the aggressive ones. And if they turn up and you don't want to just turn off the game and restart it, you have to immediately flee with Zidane. Odds are you're going to get hit anyway. Oh, great. I mean, at least the Dane had auto life, but that's not going to do much for him. Oh, you know what's worse? You can find multiples in one battle. Oh yeah, the, the peninsula power leveling. I would not consider this place an ideal version of that. At least not at this level. There's one later on in the recordings that I do think is more ideal. Still tough, though. Jesus, almost 10,000. So this was several minutes later, but I finally found the friendly on. This is the last friendly monster. And it's so cute. It's all, it's all bouncy and rowdy. And it wants a diamond. And I'm a little concerned. I cannot find the diamond. But there it is. I got three of them. So rambunctious. That's another thing I want a plushie of. 
Oh boy, the round guy. So, uh, Ozma is an optional boss in this game. I remember Ozma from the raid in, I think, the second um, Stormblood raid in FF14. And that's a motherfucker in that fight, so I cannot imagine how he is as an optional boss. I think once you've actually found it, it will show up on the map. There's a few, uh, a few locations that can turn up. Whee! This is not it. I thought maybe there was something here. But if there is, that's not how you find it. But here it is. Here's where I found it. Right, uh, right in the middle of the ocean. So just eat a dead pepper underneath it. Off it goes. Oh, so, okay, this isn't the paradise. This is the air garden. This is the last place where you can dig up chocographs. Also, I would not consider this paradise because it's probably the most irritating one to do hot and cold. Yeah, I'm only ever coming here now. I'm getting all the choker rafts and I'm never coming back. I don't like this place. At the very least, you get more points here for each item than in any other place. But that's because it takes so long to find them, and you waste a lot of time jumping down, running along the clouds, and getting to the other island. Often than not, you'll find an item on one island, and there won't be any more there. You'll have to go to the other one. Last recording of me finding a choco graph. Oh, I covered a lot of ground. Especially off stream. We're still on disc three. I found quite a few things that you can't really do anything with until disc four. It's a good game. I like it a lot. I recommend it to anyone who hasn't given it a go yet. There's a few things about it that haven't aged great. Okay, this is the last go. Okay, yeah.
That's a rare double. Yeah, Jacob just recently started the original FF7, and he's liking it a lot. I also picked up quite a few FF7s in a recent sale. FF7s. Uh, a few Final Fantasies, I mean. Including the original FF7, Final Fantasy X, and uh, I might have picked up eight. I don't, let me see. I don't think I did. No, I picked up seven and 10. I think I picked up a few other things though. I'm tempted to buy a better version of Final Fantasy 15 because I did, I did like that one. Yeah, Hot and Cold is just too precise for what it is. Robo Lords. It's only 10,000. I don't know. It's, it's so far away. I think I'm going to have to leave it. Yeah, 15 in the remake and the 7 remake are pretty similar in how they play. There we go, that's all the chocographs. So now let's go get the rest of the treasure. Ooh, Ragnarok. That is Steiner's super-powered sword. It is, it's like 77 strength. It's silly. <laughs> That's speedy bouncing. The treasure on this island is weirdly placed. It's actually on the foot of the mountain, not the mountain itself. Right there. Sort of where it's off color, actually. Fitting that we got the Dark Matter card. Yeah, it's been fun getting over my like my dumbass biases and actually trying out some of these and finding I like them a lot. Ooh, ribbon. We already got one for uh, Echo, and now we got an extra. That's all the treasures. Well, it's all the Chococraft treasures. Choco can actually find more treasures with the dead peppers, and we'll be getting a few of them later. But while I was exploring around, we got back to Alexandria, which has definitely seen better days. So I wanted to explore it a little bit. Check in on it. <laughs> Excuse me, kids. If only I didn't need to live. Well, Lindblom's doing a little better. Now's as probably a good a time as ever to come back. Nicolaj. It is for gun, okay. No, damn it, there was an item there. I'm sure of it. Now, whatever. I'm not a chef, I'm an onion.
Oh, that, there's a speedrun sword. Great. Well, I'm at I'm at hour sixty or something, so that that ain't get, that ain't happening for me. I'm gonna do my part, pacing. Hey. You know what, despite what everyone said about uh, about the card game in this, I actually kind of like it. If anything, I'm kind of good at it. Like, I have good, uh, good cards. Level 1 runs must be rough, because leveling up is what increases your ability points, so you can equip more abilities. Oh, that sucks. We can't build that. I thought he was going to say, boy, you need to leave. <laughs> what a honker. Is it at a point in discs two or three that you get Excalibur two? Oh, for fuck's sake. Good work, Hippo dealing with douchebags who don't deserve your patience. Don't be these fucks. Service people deal have to deal with enough. They don't need to deal with you. I guess the Moogle's dead. That's too bad. So gormless. Hey. Now it's in my belly. I need to remember to come back and make sure I've got multiples of these. Because I have a lot of money. Pretty sure I get all of these. This is still a pre-recorded. I did a lot of pre-recording. Uh, 
Okay, hang on. Stole your tip. No, I was hoping I could just straight rob him. There's not a whole lot you can do in Alexandria right now. I'll get nothing extra from you. That cat just kept clawing me. Well, I mean, if you want your luck to run out there, there's plenty of pretty girls you can see once. <laughs> Kujev cares a lot about you. Put a damn bell on it, I don't know. Your cat seems to be doing fine without you. Oh yeah, the male Moogle is having some trouble. There, no. And can we ring the bell? No. The bell's gone. And now let's go check out the castle. At least what little we can approach around the castle. There's a few items just around here by the dock. Bahamut heard that bell in his nightmares. There's one or two more items around here, too. A lot of treasures. That kind of makes sense. I'm being very thorough. And of course, there's an NPC who runs past and then runs away before I can talk to them. They did something right. I thought the joke with them is that they were incompetent. Get a shovel. I don't think there's any item. <clears throat> I don't think there's any items in here.
This is quite a weird mode of transportation. It's riding a statue like a raft. I've never come down here, I was curious. But this makes sense. We were down here once or twice as Steiner and Beatrix. And a couple more items right at the gate. Okay. All right, back to treasure hunting. This time stuff that you cannot find with a chocograph. But I remember seeing this, this crack in the wall. You use the dead peppers to dig into those. And I think at that point I had found all of the samurai armor. Yeah, the guys need to get their shit together. <laughs> Alright, there's another cracked wall on the same island. Not far from here, still under the evening sky. Right there, second level. It's not as obvious a crack as the last one. Dragon's hair. That is Puberina's ultimate weapon. I genuinely cannot remember her actual name. And this, this Lost Continent, we know now for sure. Huh. You'd think he would do better against her in battle. Freya, thank you. This is different, this is not a treasure, it's a secret location. It's the Mognet Central. The Mogmail location. We can't do anything here, though. At least not at this point in the story. Gotta find an item to get the equipment running again, I guess. Did you use motor oil on yourself? Trying to find items, there aren't any around here. The Moogles actually clean up after themselves, I guess. Now I'm trying to look for items out in the ocean. These are probably the hardest to find because you have to look for little bubbles. God, that's loud. Here's a handful of these. Two of them, at, at least two of them, I can't do right now. You can find the bubbles, but you can't actually dig down in there until a certain point in the story. Which is obnoxious. But I can at least 
Find this island. This is in the very, t like, very tip of the northwest side of the map. It's the Chocobo Paradise! You don't have to be too, pr too precise to dig in there, but some of them you just straight can't access right now. Ooh, Maiden Prayer changes the Fenrir summon. I mean, there's no way it's going to be as satisfying as punching them into the sky. I'm you, but I've been bleached. <laughs> Only because no one has challenged me. So it's like robbing a bank and getting sprayed with blue ink. <laughs> Dumbass. I've been watching, you haven't said anything. Hmm. In an entire, another disc. Fuck this place, Koopa. But at least now we can actually talk to the Chocobos. And they tell you all the secret locations with the cracks and the puddles. I think I found it. You mean the way I got here? Yeah, why not? Let's torture the people who don't like Tetramaster. I have a slight bit of strategy with this. Use two of my weaker cards, and we'll put them out first just to draw out the other ones. And then, like, the last three need to be overpowered. As, like, I specifically want ones with more of the arrows so that I can actively battle some of the other cards. And I want them to be the really powerful ones. This one... I can get both. Fucker. This one I can do diagonally. Let's fight him. That'll clear out those two. Nice.
Yeah, uh, I've read a good bit of head in the story, Sora, but reminder, hold off on the spoilers. Do you just want my inventory? How do we get the blue one out of the pool? In a way that's kind of jerky. Smack him on the head. He doesn't care. That's referring to the Magnet Central. What was that passageway? Uh, no, I've got to jump off there. I think I found all the mountain crack locations. There's just a couple of the sea foam ones that I need to get later. We. Mary, right, we can leave. And then once again, different audio troubles in that the audio just straight didn't record. It's only for a small bit. You can see the the air garden there. Another potential location it can turn up. After you've found it the first time, it will be on the map, I believe. At least its current location. This is one of the weirder collections of treasures, because I think these are just cosmetic, because they, they are not armor. I'm right before Ibsen's castle. I'm doing as much before we go to the castle itself. Black robe, that's for Gigi. Here it is. This is the place I was referring to. This is more of a peninsula power leveling. At least for this point in the story. This is the Popos Heights, I believe it's called. There's an exit to it from Gizamaluk's Grotto. It's that little room with the Moogles, where if you go up the ladder, one of them says, don't go up there, there's dragons there. Specifically, level 60 Elder Dragons, I think. At least they were level 60 when I came here way too early. And I scanned them with gun. These guys are rough. But they're really good for grinding, too. So the key with these guys, you need to equip um, antibody because a lot of his attacks do uh, poison damage. Like, he has Venom Breath, which Antibody just completely negates, and he has Poison Claw, which does a lot of damage and poisons you, but if you have Antibody, it will only do physical damage. It's a lot of physical damage, but you can recover from that. Generally, some of your weaker characters will probably die from one hit. If anything, they'll die from two, definitely. But also, there's a few, uh, like, there's some items you want to equip for their abilities. Um, the ones with auto-reflect, preferably auto-haste, if you get that. But definitely auto-reflect, because his other attack is Thundaga. So if you can re reflect Thundaga back at him and negate the poison, then you only need to, need to worry about physical damage. And auto-haste just makes you attack faster, so that's nice to have anyway. And also, Quinoa got into a trance at just the right point.
One nice thing, this might just be what I've noticed, but it seems like he often misses the second Poison Claw. And, uh, no big deal, Quinoa just ate a dragon. <laughs> Quinoa is amazing. Oh, Long Reach. That's the other thing I was mess I was thinking about. So uh, Long Reach, if you have that equipped, that means you can do as much damage from the back row as if you were in the front row. And you have more defense in the back row. That's where Puberina was right now. So if you have um, Auto Reflect, Auto Haste, Antibody, and Long Reach, like you get you level up enough that you can have all of those equipped. It's very easy fighting the dragons. And also, if you've got ability up and level up, then you can grind the fuck out of the dragons. But I did a lot of that off stream. Eventually, I came back to Traino just to see some extra stuff I could do. And uh, I have not ground the frogs yet. I'm at like 30 of them. Cause, just because it takes so long for the the populations to recover. But I came back to Traino to check out the auction house. I didn't really do anything with this yet. And he's got Dark Matter, that is Odin's summon item. I'm getting pretty much everything that turns up here, except for some of the wearable items, but like the rare items and the summon items that I don't have. I've got a lot of money from grinding the dragons. But the key to these is to just shut them out. Go 10,000 or more above what the current bid is, and you'll probably get it. I know they'll recover faster if you leave a male and a female there. And also if you leave a golden frog. It's still, it's taken a while anyway. I'm not sure what some of these rare items are for. Like the stuff you get at the auction house. Like the rat tail and the doga's artifact. I imagine they belong to people. And you need to give them back. Yoga's Artifact, same thing as the Rat Tail. It's a rare key item. These people really want the Promised Ring. Come on. The promised ring, I don't know if it's specific to Zidane, but it allows him to uh, restore HP. The acclaimed Dark Matter. I didn't know what the time was for Odin. Specifically for Garnet to summon Odin. No take mirror. 
not take mirror, whichever. And I think that was the last unique item they were selling. I also found a few of those Zodiac coins. Oh, Thief Gloves, I do want those. Those are also for Zidane. Oh, the fuck you are. I had money to burn. And clap. Alright, another thing I wanted to do at Trano. There were the monsters here underneath the weapon shop. Unfortunately, the, uh, the, there was a previous monster there, but you can only fight that in disc two. So there's just two uh, enemies we could fight here right now, and you can only fight them as one character. We have fought this guy before, though. The Katobal Pass. For a lot of these, one of your, like, one of the best things you can do is to use a tent on him right at the start. Like, before you've done any damage to it. Because we haven't seen this yet the previous times I used tent battle, but there's a chance that you get bitten by a debuff snake. Doesn't happen the first time. That is a good point. Yeah, because Echo gets um, Carbuncle, which is defensive. Although, Echo also has one of the strongest <laughs> offensive summons. And Earth Punch. So, like, she's got two of them. But yeah, Katoa Pass went down very quickly. I had Auto Float equipped um, so that. I think he does Earthquake or something, something ground damage based so that negated it all right but because it's disc three there's two different monsters we can fight mm, quinoa it's your time to shine So same deal. Start out with a tent and debuff them. Oops, I pressed the button too fast. Don't worry, I'm sure it'll be fine. Fuck. Well, this fight's gonna be very interesting. <laughs> or very boring. But the thing with this thing, you want to equip antibody because it does poison damage and you want to equip auto reflect because it does a lot of magic. There we go. And now because it's silenced, it can't do most of those attacks anyway. But now, so can't I. <laughs> I can at least do physical damage, and I have a chance of landing those hits. Need to be careful, though. When the monster flies, you want to go into defense. When it goes into flight, that's when it's going to do most physical damage. This poor thing looks drunk. Right here. Need to quickly defend. I'm waiting to see what else it's gonna do. That shit.
I think I have auto potion equipped for the sake of it. I might already have that ability fully covered. I think I also have auto regen on. Whoop, nope. I'm not doing bad considering I'm blind. Okay, it might be about time to fix that actually. We're both just standing here wobbling at each other. All right, now I'm good. And I don't need to worry about magic. Kingdom Law doesn't have that many magic abilities yet. Deucius. Get on the ground. Thank you. And down it goes. You don't get any, any experience or ability points from these battles, but you do get rewards. Running shoes, I think, allows you to get um, auto haste. Okay, there's one more. Griffin's heart. I probably should have gotten another reflect ring. I think I only had the one, and auto reflect is so nice to have. But I think I stopped the auctions here. It's another key item. Supposedly. Alright. At this point, I think this is the last chunk of the pre-recorded stuff. We're going to be focusing on getting all of the blue mage spells that I can get right now. There's a few that are endgame only. Although there's one in Ipsen's uh, castle that I might be able to get when we get there. But... Uh, we're back at the Aoife tree, and from the zombies, you get Roulette. Roulette is kind of rough. Basically, it just randomly picks anyone on the field and kills them. Let's kill another. And one more enemy that we can get something from here. There's actually two enemies that have this ability. One of them is this dude. Level 5 death, so anything that its level is a multiple of 5, you can kill it. The other thing, the, uh, the other monster you can get that ability from is the Draco zombie, which is in the same area. 
Nearly got out of life. But while I was going around here, something weird happened. This chunk of all of this I recorded on my new computer, which is Windows 10. Windows 10 can't really deal with Final Fantasy IX. There's a chance that when you go into battle, the game will just freeze on a blank, a black screen. That's because in Windows 10, it automatically sets it to run at 64 bits. The game was not meant for that. So if you're on Windows 10, you get FF9, go into the Steam folder and like go into the x86 folder and specifically run that version. That's the 32-bit version. 64 bits, there's a chance it'll just freeze for no reason. But uh, fittingly enough, in a couple of the Coos Marshes, there's enemies that you can also get blue magic from. For these, I, I made everyone equip their weakest weapons. Oh man, he's right on the cusp now. He's stronger than I expected. I think this is the Kuz Marsh on the Forgotten Continent. Oh boy. You fucked yourself over, my friend. It's also kind of fucked me over, because I want to eat you before you're killed. There we go, we get bad breath. Which is fitting for the... the dude that eats everything. Another enemy you might remember from earlier in the streams. Not today's stream, but the Let's Play, I guess. He was surprisingly strong. It's the Mandragoras. We can get blue magic from him, too. I think you can get it in the Marlboro. I think there's Marlboros later in the game. The problem is I'm way too strong for fighting these guys, even with my weakest weapons. But luckily, we have an ability that will help us. It hasn't helped us yet, but it turned out to be really useful for getting the other blue magics. So I'm having everyone defend, and I'm gonna have Quinoa use Matra Magic. And Matra Magic had pretty good accuracy now. It rarely missed, probably because they're really weak enemies. But that's a really easy way to make them eatable. Or edible, I guess. Eat ability able. Limit Glove is another ability you can get from multiple monsters. But the Mandragore is the easiest one, I think. All right, now this is Kuz Marsh on the Mist Continent. So right nearby where I was already. The toadies. Gonna jab him up the butt. Maybe that was enough? Yes, it was. All right. And he learned auto life. And this is just outside of the marsh. We've seen, we saw plenty of these guys at the start of the Let's Play. Same deal, I'm having everyone defend, except Quinoa. Oh, he might have just fucked himself over. Eh, it was probably fine. And then have Quinoa match your magic them and then eat them.
You might well, you might want to turn off auto reflect actually, because they're not going to do a lot of damage to you. But they could potentially kill themselves. All right, and speaking of those dudes, in Burmesia, there's the magic guys, the magic vice. They also have a blue magic spell. Magic hammer. Oh good, and we'll get to see what that does too. I guess that just steals MP. <laughs> that was weird. Oh, you obliterated me. Oh, God. I know this guy. We might not have had Keen... No, I'm sure, pretty sure we had Quinoa with us when we fought them. I didn't know we could get an ability from them, though. Everyone's favorite, Sabotender. Or Cactuar, whatever. Sabotender is something else. I mean, it's the same thing, but it's a different name for it. Uh oh. Be careful, Echo. Whatever you do next. Well, that was lucky. <laughs> Gotta look at those idiots. I kind of love them. Oh, that's gonna hurt going down, Quinoa. Hey, Dumpster Dracula. You made it right at the ass end of the pre-recorded stuff. We had just finished. Uh, we had finished this in the last stream. I came back here because there's some weapons I can buy and two more blue magic abilities in the dungeon. I think I'd literally just used a tent outside. Stocking up like hell on all of these weapons, especially the ones I couldn't buy, because I have too much money. Getting at least four of everything, and then after a point I was like, fuck it, at least five. I'm not familiar with Tim Fallens. Yeah, fuck it, five. For everything. Even the expensive shit is not a problem for me. I think I also max out on the Rising Suns. Yeah, the shopkeeper is either really happy that he can retire young, or really irritated that he's gonna have to restock his entire shop. Yeah, just max it out. Why not? And I still have hundreds of thousands left over. That's from fighting a lot of dragons. Almost every character now is at around level 70. 
I did not mean to level up that high. It was purely for the abilities. I know this is an area that I completely bypassed. I didn't even know about it. There's an item here. Golden hairpin. And an enemy. We did fight the enemy, but Quinoa didn't eat it. Golden hairpin gives auto regen. I don't, I don't know if that's specific to Zidane, but I know some of the other characters have auto regen from other, uh, other clothing. So it's probably something that, like, their clothing is probably something Zidane just couldn't wear yet. Here we go. The grenades. Eat a grenade, Kima. Why not? Good work. I think at this point, Matcher Magic wasn't super useful anymore. Uh, no, Magic did that time, actually. So at this point, everyone needs to defend. Because I've got a literal living bomb I need to eat. A house, a dragon, a bomb, it doesn't matter. Quinoa will eat it. And from that, we get Mustard Bomb, which, after you eat a grenade, a house, and a dragon, you'll probably release anyway. Yeah, Aiko did the most of the work there, sure. Now this area is after you've climbed down from the rope and you jump off right at the well before uh, before going all the way down the well. This is directly to the left of it. There's some ghosts here, and they have the last ability that we're going to get today. The Wraith, rather. These guys suck because they cast Doom. Okay, I landed that time. And down it goes. From that, we learned Frost. I'm sure we'll find out what that does exactly later. I don't think he ever uses Frost. At least not against me. Yeah, I, I would retaliate like this, too. Well, I guess I don't get doomed. Alright, the last thing. 
There's this path right off to the right, or uh, to the left of the entrance of this area. This is Mount Gulug, ref uh, as a reminder. Just an item or two. Another red hat. We've already had five of them. But there we go. An hour and a half of stuff from off stream. Cut down from like four or five hours worth. Yeah, my throat is a little raw, so uh, let's say we take like a five to ten minute break. When I come back, we'll actually play some of the game live. Alright, overpowered. Taking on Ipsen's castle. We're right outside of it. I think you gotta land there specifically in the Hildegard. I do know that's actually a hint. Look at this gang of ridiculous. Mute. I don't wanna. Punch the walrus. <laughs> but I like complaining. Yeah, fuck off. No myopic morons. Right, well, there goes him. So I think we'll take. Eh, we'll take Freya, since everyone else is over level seventy. Not what I meant to do. I think there's a Moogle around here. Might just be up in here. But I know the secret with this place. It's upside down, and that even refers to your damage. You want your weakest weapons here. Because the weaker the weapon, the more damage you do. You're hoping I didn't know the secret of this place? I mean, like I said, I looked ahead a little bit. Let's equip the Maiden Prayer. For the sake of saying the different summon. I think that 
applies to um, Fenrir. Aha, uh -huh. so it's not necessarily a Moogle, but it is weapons you can equip. Uh, and treasures, rather. This is a new one, I think. Also, we now have Medine, who I think is like stupid powerful. to eat a statue. Hoofa. <laughs> I love finishing a battle with Freya gone. She's just stuck up in the rafters somewhere. For. I think we're at a somewhere around our weakest weapons. Okay, that's basically a, a hint. that many. And I still have a crap ton of money to spare. I like the fun detail that this place clearly came from somewhere else because the chests are different. You can see a chest up in the top right corner. That I can't get to. There we go. Meow. Good thing you're wearing gloves. Aha, here's the guy. Might have been a bad idea to have someone do an attack and then match your magic. Okay, 
It missed anyway. But I know this guy has another blue spell. Blocking to eat. Yes! <laughs> From Doomy to Doomer. I think it's only the weapons that count towards the inverse uh, damage of this place. I don't think it's your clothing. Hmm, I don't think you need that. got a lot of their abilities up so they're they're largely set i think it's mostly um amaranth who's missing a lot of stuff there's a couple for cuberina but amaranth especially six dragons once we're done out here you'll use that don't worry Oh, it's higher up, that's why. I'm starting to figure out how to get that chest. So even though I have the thing, doesn't mean I can use the thing. as shit. Ha, everyone has auto reflect. So none of them are multiples of five. 
That's fine. I stole a 10 from his ass. Oh. I think Medine does holy damage, so yeah, very powerful. After a point when I was fighting the dragons and grinding, it was just have everyone defend and have Aiko use Medine. Rinse and repeat. Oh, that reminds me. Some of the abilities that they have is half MP. Costs a lot of um, ability points, but that means all of my super powered summons cost only half the MP to do. And Gun has that too, so it's pretty nice. But that does remind me. All right, we saw that. Now let's equip something more beneficial. Very beneficial. I, mean, I think Quinoa is, is the only one that doesn't learn. Like, the only one of this batch that doesn't learn long reach. So they have to stay up front. I don't need money, but recovering magic is pretty nice. Half MP doesn't count outside of battle, only inside. Do everything. Welp. <laughs> Off I go. Congratulations, now you can leave the team. Actually kill you then. I didn't expect an enemy there.
There's two more abilities that I don't have yet. I don't think he has it equipped. I did learn that ability though, so maybe I should. There's probably some good stuff here. It's dumb that it automatically targets the gargoyle. Is it a tornado or is it just the ground screaming? Okay, <laughs> different one then. So then we gotta go find four treasures of the elements. <laughs> like to me, the thief. Hopefully we don't kill it before I get anything from it. Because Medine does often max damage, at least when you get the cutscene where Medine itself shows up. Kalkin. Let's hope he is a multiple of four.
one might say we're overpowered. Overprotected, even. Not bad. Just no luck with Quinoa. Okay, we got everything from that. This guy's beefy. <laughs> wow. Kill him with a bomb box. Okay, let's see. I got Oricalcon, which is... Ooh. Well, the, uh, once we're out of here. I hope, it, I hope once we leave, Amaranth is just lying dead on the ground somewhere. Right as I get to him. that year. Ugh. Actually, can you change into something else? Maybe. Eh, yeah. What? 
I'm guessing that's Gigi's base weapon. Look who's back. Oh no. Guns? Okay. Oh boy. You got the crit. <laughs> And me too. This is a pretty nice ability. Just a straight 100% res. does my head in. I cannot get off from there. That's where I came from. Okay. Can I go all the way up? Nope. <laughs> it's almost nostalgic seeing these items that I haven't used in God knows how long. There was a buzzing sound. Now, how do I get there, though? I'm not seeing a door anywhere. I do see a doorway up there. No, I know where that comes from, though. going any further up. Oh, this is a new guy. He looks mad. I 
I'm gonna see if I can eat him. I'm pretty sure I already got whatever I could get from this. Yeah, from Cerberus. Looks cool. It ain't great to use. Two more tries. If, it, if these next two fail, then we'll just kill it. And I'll get it off screen. There we go. See, so it just needs some encouragement. Eat the dog. If you eat a dog that has two mouths, is that ironic? Oh well. I'm pretty sure you do get something from Cerberus, but I, I think I got it from another enemy. And you had all the worst, all the worst luck. Get up before me. Don't ask me that while I'm falling. Just in case. I don't think we need it, but I know we're using a lot of magic. I castle. Is there a way I can go down the trap? Oh. <laughs> One question asked and answered.
It falls over so pitifully. I did that. Okay, so... A little up. Right here, maybe? Yeah. Another Maiden Prayer. That's fine. You can kind of see where the trap doors are. Right here. Ah, ha, ha. Because if anything, we need to prove him correct that you only need yourself after we spent so long proving that you kind of can use other people. It might be good for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. no. I have an idea where he might be. Uh? See me? And now you don't care. Oh no, I dropped a penny. <laughs> All right, Zidane, make me love you more. Ah. <laughs> oh, you idiot. I didn't know there were stairs there. That's not what I meant to do. Hmm, 
if he's not up here, then maybe he's still down where I heard the, uh, the Patrick Warburton alarm. Speaking of stairs. Now, how do I get to you? disconcerting. Dad. I don't remember what I just picked up. Let me see. It's just another air racket, wasn't it? You're right. Against the flow time is in go counterclockwise, yep. Maybe. I guess we'll see. If I have them backwards, and that's why it's not working. Well, if there's only two, it wouldn't matter, would it? There we go. I got an old smell. That's a key item, maybe? No, it's an equipable item? Uh, 
Oh, that's for Odin. Okay. I'm okay with that then. Hang on. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, it's just that thing. Thank you for clipping that. What did I say at that point? Just lying dead on the ground somewhere. Oh. Leave. Amaranth is just lying dead on the ground somewhere. I knew it. Hooray. Uh, trying to move the window back. Have any of a red spirit bear? Well, it's not what I expected to be down there, but I'll take it, I guess. Well, I got the Odin thing, so I guess I can live without those items, whatever they are. Unless I get them from going upstairs. Maybe we'll find out. Uh, no, I don't have time for this. in the statue. top of the pole. Yep, 
You mean this one? Well, what even the shit? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for telling me anyway. So don't try. No, Amaranth was right. I've decided I like her now. <laughs> ah, the cat face is appropriate again. Well, I don't give a shit. Two white mages with all of the overpowered summons. Go if you're going down there. Then you don't need to be in the party. Or do they have to be in the party? Well, now I'm not sure. Let's, sw let's switch them out at least so that I can actually equip their good weapons. Oh, Hardy knows detect. Ooh, new thing. They don't, okay. <laughs> Steiner. Puberina knows a regen. I actually think this is where we're going to call a stream today. Oh, gee, I wonder where it is. You can land. Thank you.
I didn't mean for the pre-recorded stuff to last an hour and a half, but uh, Ibsen's castle lasted an hour itself. So it's been a good sized stream. Tomorrow we're going to be streaming, uh, Jacob's going to be streaming more Fire Emblem on YouTube, same time, 3 p.m. Pacific, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern, and I'm going to be joining, joining him on co-commentary. So we won't be streaming more of this tomorrow. We might on Wednesday. I do want to also stream some other things. I just haven't decided what yet. But I, I think on Wednesday we're going we're to continue with the mirrors and the elemental things, etc. God damn it. One more fight, fine. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fuck you two up. Make up your mind. All right, what I meant to do was to call the Moogle. Alright, everyone. See you all tomorrow on YouTube for Fire Emblem. Be sure to check out Jacob's first stream. It was a lot of fun. And I will see you back here on Wednesday for more Final Fantasy IX.